All right, as we've been reporting, the IFP is holding its elective conference in Ulundi in northern KwaZulu-Natal. Let's uh, take you back there now and speak to our reporter, Simpiwe Makane. Simpiwe, a very good morning to you once again. Good morning, Blaine. Good morning to our viewers at home. We're still coming to you live from Ulundi. This is where the IFP is holding its national elective conference. Yesterday, Blaine, we uh, had the leader of the IFP, Nkosumangosu Tukteleze, welcoming the delegates who are expected to be uh, part of this conference. As you can see behind me, uh, quite a number of them are already inside this marquee. So we are expecting proceedings to commence shortly. But with me, Blaine, I've got uh, a person who has been a member of the IFP since it was formed in 1975, and that is Ubabu Albert Nwango. Pangazi, thank you very much for your time. Looking back, when you joined this party, did you ever think that you'd make it this far? Well, it's been quite a journey, uh, I must confess, because uh, when one actually started on the 21st of March 1975, little did we know that we would be able to travel this far, because at the time when this uh, party was formed, there was just a vacuum uh, in the country, uh, political parties, uh, black political parties having been banned, your ANC, your PAC, black consciousness. And then uh, Umtana came up with this idea of actually, you know, filling up this gap, this void. The black voice was no longer heard because of the banning of uh, the, the, the liberation movement. So I was part of the formation, uh, the meeting that formed the party. And then from there, and I was still very young, I must confess, um, but the journey that we have traveled with uh, uh, the leader of this party uh, for the last 44 years has been quite a journey which, uh, with, with ups and downs, obviously, but um, I, I admire his endurance, I admire his intellect, I admire his political astuteness, uh, I admire his vision, uh, I admire his commitment to working for his own, for his people. Talking about uh, the leadership qualities that you admire about Ingosu Mangosu Tupteles, of course he's expected to step down from the leadership role in this particular conference. The question that many people may ask is, this, this party was formed by him, he has been a leader of this party for so long. The person who will take over from here, is it, is it, is it not going to be a challenge for that person to, to take over the reins of, of, of such a historic party? Well, we, we, we have uh, been with Umtoana for a long time. Even the candidate actually grew up under Umtoana and he has actually trained us. Uh, he has actually trained us in leadership and has actually given us all that one could expect from the leader to give his followers. And we have actually been nurtured uh, as, as leaders. There is very little that I can say uh, we are actually uh, will be found wanting uh, because Umtoana has actually um, did everything that uh, we could expect of him. Therefore, I am not overly concerned about what might happen, obviously, we must um, admit that uh, the IFP has never been led by anyone else other than its founder. So this is a new culture altogether where we are going to have a person who, who leading us who, has, who is not a founder of the party. But in terms of leadership qualities, in terms of abilities, uh, I, I have no fears. As a person who, who, who's part of the leadership of the IFP, can you categorically state it clear that uh, everyone in the party is happy with uh, Velenko Sini Shabisa being the uh, candidate to lead this party? Well, when he was nominated by party structures, it was unanimous. You know, I, I don't know of any other expression of unanimity on a candidate other than, you know, being voted by all the people who were there. So when he was nominated at a meeting comprising all the, le part, the levels of party structures, it was unanimous. So it would be a miracle if anything else 
could actually happen uh, today, but I'm not actually expecting any hurdles uh, insofar as uh, Mr. Thabisa's candidature is concerned. The current state of the party, we know of course that the party was supposed to ha hold this elective conference earlier, but there were issues of bogus branches uh, mushrooming within the structures of the party. Uh, has that been cleared? Yeah, uh, one of my responsibilities in the party is, is that of party structures. We could not obviously hold this conference earlier than we had uh, wanted to because of bogus branches. We, we had to clean up our, our deck as it were, clean up our structures and we did that over the last two, three years uh, and we are now satisfied that everybody who is here is legitimately here because he comes from legitimate party structures. The other question that uh, I would want you to, uh, to answer for, for us, uh, Babu Mwango, is the issue of democracy within the party. We've had quite a number of people saying uh, leadership is imposed on, 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 on delegates. They, they are not free to even contest on the floor uh, if they so wish. What would you say about that? That's, that's a load of rubbish. Um, I'm a leader in the IFP. I was never imposed on anybody. Uh, from the time when I was a branch leader, I was elected. Uh, I was the chairman of the Zululand district, the most important district in the IFP, for 14 years. And I, on, on each occasion, I was e elected unopposed in a conference of the district. Uh, I'm deputy national chairperson of the party. I never, you know, w gone around, uh, you know, asking people to, bribing, you know, people to vote for me like uh, one is hearing that there were some billions of runs you know paying some delegates in one conference which i will not actually mention uh, but uh, i was elected and uh, we now have a new structure of the national youth brigade it was a you know democracy in practice here yeah. a smooth smooth elections we elected the women's brigade com um, national committee the delegates actually did that smoothly and I don't expect anything else. You see, the problem is for people to narrow the definition of democracy. Because democracy does not necessarily mean, you know, raising one's hand for a candidate. We have a democratic constitution in this country. Did you ever vote, voted for that? Con uh, did you vote for that constitution? No. It is a product of consensus. Consensus is democracy. I was part of CODESA. We never voted for, for issues there. It, we engaged in discussing until sufficient consensus was reached. So you are not going to turn around that because people did not vote for all the issues that are in the constitution, therefore our constitution is undemocratic. So it's a very, it's a, for me, it's a very my, myopic view in my, in, in, in my view, actually, it's a very narrow view of democracy. Mr. Mwango, how, how does a party like the IFP ensure that it gets support not only uh, from Zulu-speaking people, but also from uh, people from other provinces, for instance, Limpopo, the, the Eastern Cape, and so on? You see, the, I mean, money is the milk of politics. If you do not have financial resources, you will always be hamstrung as, as far as mobilization is concerned. However, even if, uh, I mean, despite all of those uh, shortcomings in terms of resources, but the party actually is, is actually making inroads in other, in other provinces. For instance, yesterday we were receiving reports from our leadership in the Eastern Cape. We received a report from our leadership in Gauteng. We received reports from our leaders in Northwest and Limpopo. We are actually making, you know, some inroads, but with sufficient resources, we would actually be, be doing, you know, visible and telling, you know, um, uh, inroads with, you know, visible results in those provinces. Thank you very much for it. Thank you. There was the IFP National Deputy Chairperson, 
Mr. Albert Mwango, taking us through the journey of the IFP and also highlighting some of the successes and challenges that the party is currently facing. We are expecting the leader of the IFP, Nko Sumango Sutub Tedezi, to shortly address these uh, thousands of delegates. This will be his final address to these delegates as he's officially now steps down from uh, leading the IFP, which he has been leading since it was formed in 1975. Blaine, we will continue to solicit views from different structures of the party. The IFP Women's Brigade will also be uh, talking to the youth structure of the IFP in a short while. It's back to you in Johannesburg for now. All right, Sampiwa, thank you very much indeed, my friend. We'll try to catch up with, with you in a short while. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the serious business of comedy next.